Hi guys, and welcome to Cruise Boys, The Big Question, where we explore the big questions, uh, the cruise questions, of course, and we have a discussion around some of these topics. So for this week, we want to look at cruise traditions. So are we seeing them disappear or are we seeing new ones emerging? Let's find out. Ever since the emergence of the cruise industry in the mid 1840s, cruising has adopted a number of traditions over the years. And these are sometimes steeped a little bit in history and some of them have just basically grown organically. I want to explore some of these cruise traditions and then sit down with Ken and Lindsay from Ken Goes Cruising and get their opinion on you know, the traditions and what they have shared and experienced and understand what their favorite traditions are. So stay tuned as I ask the big question, are the old traditions dying? some of the traditions and also provide some experience from our from us when we've been cruising of some of the traditions that we've seen on board or partaken in now there is traditions that apply to a lot of the cruise ships and a lot of the cruise lines and then there is specific traditions that apply to a smaller number of cruise lines I'm going to first of all look at three of the traditions that you'll find pretty much across the cruise uh, well ship christenings so one way ships uh, mark the, a new ship is by having a ship christening. And this involves either smashing a bottle of champagne or a bottle of wine against a ship's bow um, to, to christen it. Now, the tradition is rooted where, down through the centuries when sailors used to sprinkle holy water on the decks of the ship in order to bless it and give it good fortune for when it sailed. Now, in the 1500s, um, there was a practice where a goblet of wine would be drunk and anything remaining in the goblet would be uh, put on the deck or, or splashed across the deck, same thing for luck and for fortune, and then they'd throw the goblet overboard. By about the 1800, there was a lot of Navy boats being built, and so you can understand that this is gonna be a quite an expensive exercise. So instead, what they did was they threw bottles of wine overboard. The tradition that we know today, where the bottle smashing is actually happening, it was during it came around during the reign of Queen Victoria and it was Queen Victoria herself who was the first person to enact this tradition so when the HMS Royal Arthur uh, was launched and at her christening a bottle was smashed against the ship now a lot of the cruise lines actually saw this and for some strange reason they decided to adopt it and we still have the tradition today the one thing is though I always wonder is that glass all going into the port and then, I wonder how many fish actually get drunk at those christening ceremonies. Keel Lang and Coin Ceremony. So one of the first traditions for a cruise line is the Keel Lang Ceremony. And the keel is that big beam that goes from end to end of the cruise ship. So it's the backbone. Now during the Keel Lang Ceremony, a number of coins which are either generally like minted for the occasion are actually placed in the actual keel itself or they're removed after the ceremony and they're put in a display case for passengers to see when the ship is built so the tradition actually comes from where sailors used to have a silver coin and they also used to put it under the mask and that would provide good fortune and bless the ship as well kind of like the bottle smashing ceremony godparents so it seems that all cruise ships these days have a godmother and these are actually people who are either come from royalty or who are celebrities more so these days so it's believed that the feminine energy brings good luck and protection for future sailings so the role of the godmother is to attend the christening ceremony obviously and they do the bottle breaking in the ceremony now back in the old days they used to swing the bottle um but it's changed a bit these days and they generally just press a big red button. So let's look at some of these godmothers and the ships that they're godmothers to. So we have Kate, Princess of Wales, who is the godmother to Royal Princess. We have Oprah Winfrey, who is the godmother to Holland America's New Statterdam. 
you've got Katy Perry for uh, NCL Prima, and you've got Mariah Carey for Disney Fantasy. Sweet, sweet fantasy, baby. <laughs> no, enough of that. <laughs> now I want to explore some other general traditions that you may see on cruise ships today, or you may have seen in the past. So let's go have a look. Keyside crowd send-offs. So from the early age of cruising back in the 1900s, up until you know the, the late 20th century, you would generally see that there would be parties or throngs of well-wishers who would go onto the decks, throw streamers, have bands, and wave passengers off. That today seems like a thing of the past. And to be quite honest, when I look out on the dock, when I'm sailing out of, say, Southampton, I'm lucky to see two people throwing off the ropes and a couple of seagulls. There's no real fanfare anymore. I think most of the action happens on the ship these days. Sail away parties. So who doesn't like a good party? And after a sometimes stressful embarkation, trying to find your cabin, unpacking your bags, registering your credit card, trying to get the kids in a kids club so you can go for a drink, it's always great to get yourself involved in a party as you're sailing out of port. So we like a good old sail away and we've been uh, you know, we have been a part of these sail away parties and we've had a lot of fun. Um, cruise lines do it a little bit differently, so let's have a look. You've got Carnival who take more of a traditional vibe, so they're like party, 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 music, dancing, the whole lot, which is great. You have um, a different vibe on Virgin where they usually have like a funk band and glasses of champagne, which are great. Um, there is a good tip. Um, just make sure that, uh, you know, because the alcohol, the bar tab doesn't go very far on Virgin, that you do attend these parties because that's where you get the free champagne. <laughs> and say, and uh, Disney have a um, sail away with Mickey. So uh, sail away, sorry, sail away party. I'm going to say that again. Say, say, Sail a wave party with Mickey, um, which is a bon voyage celebration. So, I mean, who wouldn't want to get down and boogie with Mickey? In the past, P&O have had, a, had the Great British Sail Away, which has disappeared during COVID uh, and has failed to emerge on most of the ships. I have seen something indoor with Arvia, but uh, for the P&O ships that I've been or have seen lately, there hasn't been any sail away parties. Now, when asked why the sail away parties were missing, P&O stated that it was due to plastic waste, and that's because of the plastic flags are being waved. Um, I think it's like maybe cost cutting. I don't know. I mean, P&O, have you heard of paper or maybe not even having the flags, but having the party? The dessert parade with serviette waving. So this is a tradition that went for many, many years. And unfortunately during the pandemic, I did see that it disappeared and it has crept in a little bit on some cruise ships or it's changed what it used to be. So um, going back even to 2018, I remember being on MSC and the waiters would come out with baked Alaskas. Now in the past, they used to flambe them, but because of health and safety and fire risk, I don't think they're actually flom flambeing Alaskas anymore or, or flambeing on the actual, on your table. Uh, they generally just paraded them around and then it was served. And it was so much fun. People would wave their serviettes around and then COVID came along and it seemed to have died. Um, since COVID, I have seen that ships have made some other amends. So I haven't really, and correct me if you've seen it, but we haven't seen too many dessert parades in, in the main dining rooms. What we have seen though, is we have seen uh, more of the staff going around and hitting like pots and pans and serenading people or, or singing to people with guitars. Um, recently, Tristan was on Ambassador ambition and there was some serviette waving which was really good to see but it's a tradition which is fun and i hope that they bring it back turn down service and towel animals now turn down service has since the pandemic has changed a lot so during the pandemic they didn't want staff to go into people's cabins or anyone to go in anyone's cabins um and so therefore there was a limited number of times that someone or that your cabin steward would go into your cabin. Now, a lot of cruise lines used to have a turn down service and I'm seeing that is not the case uh, as much as what it used to be. 
So I think it's really nice being able to come back at night to your cabin, having a bed down, nice chocolate on the pillow, and then, yeah, it's just something nice just to come back to your cabin at night. Now, I don't know whether this is still an overlag because of COVID and whether the stewards can't come in. For me, I think more so it's to do with either the lack of staff or just, you know, another cost cutting measure to be quite honest. Towel animals are also a really fun and it's something that staff lo love to do. I mean, some of the towel animals I've seen, monkeys and elephants and dogs and cats and everything. We've only seen it once, uh, which was on, I think it was on, I think it was on Celebrity to be, to be quite honest, but the history and, and the exact or original tradition is believed to have come from Carnival Cruise Lines. And it was probably done with more sort of napkins or handkerchiefs back in those days. But as time's gone on, tow animals ha have appeared on multiple different cruise lines as well, um, which has been really great. You are finding that there is less and less of these happening because apparently it's an environmental factor where there is, you need at least two towels to make the tow animal and uh, the ship needs to wash the actual towels after they've been made into the tow animal. So because of the, you know, more washing and uh, more use of towels, it's seen as being environmentally unfriendly these days. So you may find that it's gonna be, you know, you may see it less and less as time goes on. One interesting fact is that Carnival have produced a book about 40 different ways in which to create towel animals. I mean, how amazing is that? You can actually get it on Amazon or you can directly get it from Carnival. Fall nights. So I think gone are the days of all cruise lines allow, or making you dress up like a penguin. You will find that depending on the cruise line that you're on, that formal nights or celebration nights or gala nights or whatever they are, look slightly different on each cruise line. And the formality is also different. So let me start with probably one of the most formal cruise lines that I've been on, which is Cunard. Now Cunard do different types of formal nights. So they do a, or they're called gala evenings. So they either have like a black and uh, white theme, they have a red and gold theme, they have masquerade balls, and they have roaring 30s. And what they will do is they will go and decorate the ship uh, in line with the theme as well. So it's a really, really special night. And if you're one person that really loves to dress up in a very formal environment, Cunard is the way to go. Pino have form, a formal night called Celebration Night, and it gives you the option to put your most fashionable foot forward. So elegance is the order of the evening. So we have had the chance to go on Pino um, and, and have a, a, a celebration night. We went on uh, Britannia back in 2018. Whilst we're on there, pretty much everyone was in full tux and uh, ball gowns. Recently, Tristan went on Iona and with Josh and he said that the formalities just weren't there where they used to be as well. So can see that even with a cruise line, you may find that the formality may be different depending on the actual ship itself. Celebrity cruises have sheep night, and with sheep night, the, it, it is generally like two formal nights. Uh, when we're on Celebrity, I think we had one sheep night, and it's not so much formal, it's just, you know, having an elegant designer jeans, or a really nice top, or, just dressing different. Um, I think we went very cash. I love my suspenders. You'll see me wearing suspenders a lot <laughs> on cruise ships, all different colors. Uh, some light up, some don't. Um, but on Celebrity, we, we did go out and just, I wore suspenders, a shirt and some nice um, trousers. So it's a little bit informal, which is great. Um, and everyone tended to have a great night on Chic Night. The new One of the newcomers to the cruise industry, Virgin Voyages. Now, Virgin has to be different. So for their gala or formal nights, they actually have Scarlet Night. And Scarlet Night is where you wear a splash of Scarlet. These nights are crazy. I mean, we had a, 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 like a impromptu wedding where they went and slapped uh, tags on people um, that was like sister-in-law so, or, or mother-in-law or, or brother or drunken uncle or something. So people part talk. They've got tentacles, these inflatable tentacles coming out of the ship. Um, it's just party, 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 party. You've got um, the hostess who does uh, a musical performance. There's a big party. It's just 
it's crazy. It's different, it's crazy, but it's really great to get into. So I've got Ken and Lindsay from Pengo's uh, Cruising. And hi guys, how are you? Hi, we're fine, yeah. thanks. Nice yeah. to see you. Good, good, good. So, um, yeah, the topic we're talking about today is, is more around sort of cruise traditions. So I think what my first question to you would be is what are your favorite cruise uh, traditions and, and do they still exist? Oh. A favourite tradition, some of my favourite traditions involve dining rooms yeah. and deck sports are the okay. two things I think that we, uh, we, we've enjoyed the most. Um, we love to play points, we love to play shuffleboard every day, yeah. we've met some really good friends, um, yeah. friends that we met 20 odd years ago that we still send Christmas cards and things to, so we find it's a really good way of meeting people and having fun. You like the old sort of the, the old school sort of shuffleboard. So I know that I've been on, you know, I haven't probably, well, I have not been cruising, you're more Susan cruises than us, but um, we've been, you know, when we've been on ships and, uh, you know, shuffleboard and things is, is still happening, which is great to see because it looks like a lot of fun. It is, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's quite competitive. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it's meant to be friendly. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, but there's also cricket and things like that on cricket. some ships. Yeah. So, cricket, really? Oh, I mean, how more traditional can you get? You know, and they even sometimes <laughs> have um, cricket matches against the staff. You're also saying your dining room tradition. So, what type of things would you can you remember back from sort of your dining room experiences? Well, Sil silver service. Silver service. Yeah. Everything was silver service when we first started cruising, which was yep. nice, but it did lead to a lot more wasted food. Oh. So, uh, yeah, yeah. But some people would just say more, 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 and they'd pile it on the plates and they'd never eat it. Um, <laughs> some other perhaps more unsavory things that we can remember, smoking in, oh, in really? restaurants. <laughs> yeah. So we used to smoke, didn't we? And we used to be able to, for the first few years when we cruised, we sit in the smoking area of the main dining yeah. room you'd have a cigarette after dinner some people would have a cigarette after each course <laughs> yeah, seriously. I, suppose, I suppose with now the smoking laws and that 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 definitely has sort of taken it more into a corner of the ship another thing that i noticed on on ships as well that we've been cruising um is that they used to do things like the waiters used to come out and present sort of desserts like the baked alaska and things like that is that some some of your experience as well yeah, they used to do the Baked Alaska Parade and the Parade of the Chefs, which seems to have gone yeah. now. Yeah. Uh, we have heard rumours that it's coming back, but in what form, we're not quite sure on yeah. the know anyway. Yeah. It, it still takes place on some of the other ships. Yeah. Um, and it perhaps is a little bit different on ships like the MSC ship. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, they were... They were really good. That was really good fun. Um, but Baked Alaska tends not to come around on the ships no. that we've been on. And it's not today. Baked Alaska anymore either, is it? Not like it used to be. Where it used no, to be no. It's now just squidgy on the outside and a bit of yeah. a bit of I think recently what I've found is that they do do some type of procession these days, but it's generally not with food. It's kind of just smashing pots and pans and, and walking around. And that, that that's kind of the processions that I've, I've sort of looked at. The other thing that I, I look, uh, know is, is during those processions or when the chefs come out as well, that everyone grabs their napkins and, and yeah. waves them around. And I suppose that's something that I haven't seen for some time either. No, we haven't seen that. And the other thing that we haven't seen for some time in the main dining room is flambéing, because mm -hmm. they put the flambé at the table in the main dining room. So you'd, you'd yep. have your Christmas pudding or your crepes, yep. and they'd load it severely with drink, and then <laughs> yeah, up it would go. But that hasn't been done in the main dining room for some while either now. Yeah. So with all these different types of cruise traditions, um, I mean, everyone's got their own individual traditions as well. But do you partake in sort of the, the kind of the ship-wide tradition, so your sail away parties and those types of things as well? We do. We do, yes. We miss the old tradition of having a band sailing yeah. off at the key. At the key side. In, in, in ah, okay. So I a local band of some sort mm -hmm. and ticker tape as well and they used out. to have the ticker <laughs> tape parade off the side of the ship yeah. for every time you sailed away yeah oh really yeah. so that's that's something that i had seen sort of are we talking about 80s 90s here <laughs> late 90s <laughs> late 90s there we go late, late 90s yes <laughs> yeah i mean i've seen footage of that and that's something that now you know on the quayside, side it's just like you just get on the ship and you wouldn't even oh. 
Okay. Hey, there's just no fanfare anymore. Even for new ships coming in, there's not as much fanfare anymore, is there? No. No, I mean, yeah, you get on a new ship and, uh, and uh, you know, fireworks and everything like that. Some companies still do it, don't yeah. they? Let's yeah. totally they do it next year on Queen Anne. But, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. But they, they, it's not as special. Cruising not as special as it used to be. Um, no. So I no. the formal nights used to be more special. The formal yeah. nights, the ladies used to be all presented with an orchid in the box. Oh, lovely. And the yeah. gentlemen were all presented with buttonholes. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. so every formal night you had on board, and it was two a week in the days, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, you'd be given your buttonholes and your orchids. Yeah. Oh, do orchids just because you want to cruise? Oh, yeah, it's too expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's like a nice touch, and, and I would suppose that everyone was kind of black tie back then as well. Yeah. yeah. Very few, very few that wouldn't dress. No. Um, yeah. And if you did try and go somewhere where dress code was required, mm. it yeah. was required. Largely, we got the opportunity to go on Queen Mary. And I mean, Cunard, I mean, when they do their formal nights, they're pretty dressed up. Um, but when we were on there, I think people didn't go to the extreme that they used to. And it just, it, it sort of just doesn't make it as special. A lot of cruise lines, tend to sort of give an elegant or formal night, but it's more, the dress code's not enforced. And so what you tend to find now is that people just turn up in, I, I know an example that when we're on Costa, the women used to get really, you know, they get really dressed up. And the men will just turn up in like ripped jeans <laughs> and a yeah. grubby t-shirt. And even on Cunard though, the night that we, we had one of the formal nights, we had two formal nights, and on one night there was a guy wearing a sweater sitting behind us and it was just, yeah. It's a bit sad, isn't it? It spoils the ambience of the night. And what I don't yeah. understand is, I mean, I would say probably 85, 90% of cruise companies don't have proper formal nights. Yeah. If you don't want to have a proper formal night, then go on the 85% of cruise lines that don't do it. You know, during the pandemic as well, there was a lot of changes on cruise ships. So there was a lot of having to social distance and masking. Do you think the pandemics had a major effect on a lot of the actual, uh, a lot of the, the traditions of, of cruising? And do you think that is, you know, going to be the same for the future that, you know, some of the traditions have died? Well, I think it's a bit of a mixture. Mm. I, I think that some of the things um, have come back after the pandemic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, some of the things that we couldn't do when we first went back onto the ship yeah. uh, because of social distancing and things that yeah. we didn't come back. Um, and even as far as some of the cocktail parties, they've come back. Yeah. Um, but I think that having used it as an excuse to cut back, yeah, no, the majority of companies won't bring a lot of it back. No, no. Yeah. I, think, I think the pandemic is, to begin with, it was justifiable and you know the sharing of utensils and things yep. like that um they cut out shuffleboard because you couldn't yep. handle the same bits of equipment while you're using they stopped uh, the choir that we enjoy because spitting when you're singing so yep. all that was perfectly understandable but you know we do all this at home now so yeah. i don't believe there's a reason why you can't do it on the ship so uh, um, what you're saying is that you're saying it's more to do now that the pandemic's over you feel that it's a bit of cost cutting as well because they have had haven't done it for a while yeah and of course a lot of people who have only cruised post pandemic don't yeah. know any difference so many new people are new to cruising now that yeah. they think cruising as they see it now is absolutely wonderful and it yeah. is but it's yeah. not quite wonderful as it used to be. So it seems a lot of it's, uh, you know, from our, our perspective with, with some of the newer traditions as well, is uh, things like White Night. I th on a lot of Italian cruise lines, it's like White Night is a staple. Um, we're also seeing a lot more silent discos on, on cruise ships, which is something that, you know, I suppose that comes with technology and that, but that is, it seems to be a very popular uh, tradition now for a lot of cruise lines. Um, so yeah I, I can see things emerging as well and i suppose they have to emerge because they have to probably cater for a, you know a different wider audience these days as well yeah yeah there's a certain amount of move with the times yeah you and have i to. quite like that idea mm. uh, mm. i just think that to some extent they're forgetting their past yeah uh, and pushing it to one side because because there are so many people that don't know any different mm. yeah 
Yeah. So I suppose my question to you is, is have the old traditions died? I think it's become a mixture. Yeah. I think on some of the ships that are a little bit more traditional in their outlook, mm -hmm. I think yep. the traditions are still there. Um, for instance, if we were to go on Aurora, you'd get mm -hmm. a big mix of deck sports, <laughs> deck sports and uh, quizzes, and you get your choir and things like that. If you were to go on something a little bit more uh, modern, like you know, Iona, Navia, mm -hmm. although those things are there, they're not prominent anyway. Thank you very much, Ken and Lindsay, for joining me today. Um, it's you know, it's good to hear you know, your perspective being that you have cruised for so many years as well. Um, as I said, we, we've only just started in the last couple of years and even we're seeing a lot of changes uh, in traditions and mainly down to, you know, impacted by the pandemic. So if you haven't subscribed already, head over to Ken and Lindsay's channel, which is Ken Goes Cruising and make sure you subscribe. So thanks guys. Thank you. Cheers. Bye for now. Cheers, Justin. Thanks. So after exploring all the different cruise traditions i mean i can see that there is some that have been around for a very long time there's some that unfortunately due to the pandemic or because of cost cutting have disappeared some have changed a little bit and there is also new ones emerging so i want to know or we want to know what your favorite cruise traditions are are they still around are they new and emerging so write a comment down below and if you really like the channel, make sure that you subscribe to us. And if you really, really love the channel, how about becoming a Patreon? So that's it for us from this week. Until next time, bye. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, like, comment, and share.